Uh, first off, my name is Billy Clark. I'm the artistic director here at Culture Hub. Uh, we're really, really happy to um, be trying this out. It's the first time that we've really uh, tried to have a, a conversation um, like this that's about uh, the work that we're really excited and, and have been engaged in for a long time. And I know all of you guys have been too. So um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the format was sort of inspired by a longtime La Mama artist, uh, Lois Weaver. It's called The Long Table. And the idea was is that uh, it's about reclaiming the dinner table for a place for, for actually meaningful conversation. And instead of having a dinner of food, it's a dinner uh, of dialogue and that anyone can join that, that table and be a part of the conversation. Uh, so it's a format that we've done over the past couple of years and um, we've had different topics and, and this time we, we decided that, well, it would be really cool to, to sort of to, to have one of these uh, long tables where people are participating from, from all over uh, the world and that we're really talking about this idea of staging the network. So how, how we can use um, you know, video conferencing technologies, different, the internet, different types of technology uh, to work together, to collaborate together over distance. Um, all of you guys are very much uh, engaged in that uh, process. So um, what I'd like to do is, is just go around the table. Everyone could do a short introduction, let, let everyone know where you are um, and, and, and basically what, you, what you're doing, uh, a little bit about what you're doing. And then once uh, the introductions are over, we'll actually start the long table uh, which is a very strict 45 minutes. So we'll, we'll really stick to 45 minutes and we'll knock it off as, uh, whenever the 45 minutes is up. The idea is that to end it and then that th even if there are still thoughts, things that want to be said, that those can then be said sort of in a, in a communal space um, afterwards. So we can still stay connected. We can continue to have uh, conversations, but the actual formal event of the table will end in at, at 45 minutes. Any questions? No? Okay, great. And we have a, a couple audience members here, just, a, just a, 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 a few, but any of you, if you wanna join the conversation and sit at the table at any point, you can come and join the conversation. You're all welcome. And uh, you don't have to stay. Anyone can leave the conversation at any point as well. All right? So why don't we, uh, we go to, to Pablo here. I'll pass the baton to you. Okay, so hello everyone. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Pablo, Pablo Cesar. I'm right now in Beijing. So it's like six o'clock in the morning here, something like that, 6.30 actually. Um, I'm a researcher, actually. I'm not an artist, I'm not a performer. I'm a researcher, I work at CWI. Uh, that's Centrum Viscunde in Informatica, that's the National Research Center uh, for Computer Science and Mathematics in the Netherlands. Um, myself, I'm a computer scientist, and of course as a researcher what I do is that I look at problems, I try to find solutions, I analyze data, um, I have hypotheses, and then I basically run trials. Uh, in this specific case, and that's thanks to Falmouth and Ian there, uh, the problem was about distributed performances. So that's exactly what I've been doing for the last three years. Um, we've been doing research on distributed performance arts. Uh, we've been doing research on how you can uh, split the audience uh, based on network, how can you split the stage. Uh, and we have run a couple of performances that I would say experiments. You will hate me for saying that, but that's how I see it as a scientist. Um, and basically, I'm here to learn from you because I guess you guys, you've been doing this for so much long time that I've been doing, uh, that I think I have a lot to learn. Um, I get some knowledge from what I've been doing. So I've been really trying to research all the infrastructure. I do a lot of networking, um, media composition. Can you include videos and other things in the performance? Um, and I'm really willing to hear much more about what you are doing and learning from you guys. Thank you, Pablo. Shall we jump over to Sarah? Hello. Uh, good night for me. I am in Paris. 
I want to say uh, hello to the people uh, in place and uh, to the people that is watching us uh, by streaming. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I hope everybody get a, a good time together and uh, learn each other. Uh, my name is uh, Sara Malina I am artistic director of Intact project is um, it's a project about uh, art and telepresence. Uh, with more than 10 years of experience, we are uh, working uh, on uh, different formats to teleshare uh, in a multi-user multi uh, way. Uh, at, the, at the same time, uh, uh, lately, uh, since 2011, we are working much more in robotic to, to transform the, the presence in uh, physical phenomena. Our network is large. Uh, more than 300 uh, artists has uh, participated in Intact project uh, in different countries: uh, Canada, United States, Ecuador, uh, France, uh, Spain. And um, um, voila! Is <laughs> more or less what what I can share with you in general. And uh, I'm here for for learn of you and respond to uh, any question if I can. And I just want to say that uh, I learn English by myself. So uh, I ask a little patient if uh, sometime I ask you repeat uh, any question. Thank you. So maybe we can jump to Ian. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm, uh, yeah, great. Hi. Hi. I'm Ian Bisco. I'm at uh, Falmouth University in Cornwall in the United Kingdom. We're right down at the end of the country here. Just, uh, there we go, tipping out into the ocean. Uh, so my background <laughs> is actually as a, a systems engineer um, in aerospace and communication. So I used to work with people like Boeing and NASA on projects like satellites. And um, took a late entry into research. So for the last few years, I've been here at Falmouth. Um, I'm involved with a number of projects, um, one of which is VConnect, working with Pablo. <clears throat> and um, as Pablo said, one of the projects we did was working with Miracle Theatre on a, a two-site production of The Tempest, uh, which happened just a month ago. Um, I'm also going to be doing some work with Jason up in Manchester. Who I'm sure will introduce himself next. And uh, during the summer, I produced uh, a digital arts festival where we had a performance which Jesse and Jason were involved in. So that was linking New York, Manchester, I think Paris, and a few other places live with uh, a stage um, that was in the middle of our old town during a tall ships race. And uh, I've just started work on an online orchestra project where we're look where we're working with composers. Um, to develop an environment where uh, people in remote locations that play orchestral instruments that want to play together can come online and play. But obviously orchestras are used, you know, it's not jamming, so they're used to very small delay issues. So in that project, it's not just about technology. We're working with composers who will actually be composing orchestral pieces that embrace latency. So. So I'm in a number of different online performance projects and very interested to hear what other people are doing here this evening. Great, thank you. Let's jump over to Jason. Hi everybody. Um, thanks for inviting me here. Um, I've been working uh, basically as part of Contact Theatre um, with uh, Billy and Jesse over there. Uh, a number of uh, telepresence-led um, pieces of work, um, which has actually propelled me into, I'm now a, a research PhD candidate at the University of um, Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, and part of my work is uh, about discovering intimacy within mediated environments, in particular things like telepresence, but also in uh, much less media-rich uh, scenarios. Um, I, like I think everyone here, my my background has been kind of chaotic with uh, uh, 
I've made, made large scale outdoor theater performances back in 90, in the early 90s. And it's just after I got a couple of degrees in, um, in sciences. So coming into the arts as an artist was kind of a laborious and strangely convoluted process. But now it seems to put me right in the middle of somewhere I really want to be. Um, so with, there's a number of um, uh, projects, I think. That, I mean, I have a project with, with uh, Ian, as he discussed earlier, uh, which involves uh, using the Janet network and some um, uh, telepresence equipment that's been developed there. Um, we're also hoping to do some more work uh, with some of the other guys around the table. And of course, we have an ongoing relationship with, um, with Culture Hub. Uh, and I don't think, I, I think I can speak for everyone in saying that there is always something new to learn with this stuff. <laughs> so yes, we're waiting for that. Thank you. Um, so just to, to introduce myself a little bit, uh, my name is Billy Clark, again, uh, artistic director at Culture Hub. Uh, my background is experimental theater. Um, and I sort of stumbled into this world. Uh, I was at La Mama. Um, and for those of you that are not familiar with La Mama, it's a, a, a 50, um, uh, 50 plus year um, uh, experimental performing arts presenter here in uh, New York. Um, and they had been working for 30 plus years, I, I guess, at the beginning, maybe closing on 40 now years with uh, an institute in um, Korea called the Seoul Institute of the Arts. Uh, we founded Culture Hub in 2009 as, as uh, to be a link between those organizations and to try to see how telepresence technology could, could connect um, those two locations to have more interactivity both for education but also being, um, I think, from the very beginning, forward thinking in the sense that we wanted it to be a platform to see how we could explore this as a platform for extending these uh, very large uh, analog uh, networks that uh, La Mama and the Seoul Institute had, had created. Um, so we really started to, to focus on this aspect um, uh, not as a a creator, as many of you are, um, really trying to develop platforms, but really from a from a user perspective, um, how would the performing arts utilize what what is out there in the market already? What how can we strap things together and 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 use it? And um, obviously, our collaborations with Contact at, in the beginning uh, um, and over the years have have been uh, a really big part of that development. So I want to um, pass it off to Jesse uh, so he can introduce himse himself uh, and also um, maybe start to frame a little bit of uh, some of the things that he's been thinking about and that he's been discussing with all of you uh, about where this is going, why it's going there, and, uh, <laughs> and why we should care. Hi, everybody. So experimental media is my day job. Uh, that's what I do for a living. Um, it's kind of a new day job for me. Uh, I've been doing this for about three years now, and I find it's terribly invigorating. Uh, I don't want to stop. Um, my background includes a lot of different things. Uh, I've studied jazz. I've studied humanities. Um, most recently, media studies at the New School. Um, that's what brought me to New York. And after that, I started looking around for uh, media work. And I landed here quite um, fortunately. Um, so since becoming a part of Culture Hub, um, I've l been learning how these things work. Um, when I first started working here, I didn't know what S-Video or Composite was. Uh, for the nerds out there, they, they'll understand just how naive that is for a technician to not know the difference between different video cables. Um, but since being a part of this place, it's been, it's been thrilling. It's just constantly feeding new information into my head and trying to make use of it. Uh, so now I want to see this practice grow. I want to know where it's going. I want to solve some of its problems and make it less frustrating and more fun for people actually to pick up and make a part of their daily practice, not just artists, but everybody. Uh, I think it's the kind of thing that sh should be a utility. It should, it should be like tap water. Um, that's kind of what the internet already is, and I think moving into artistic practices um, 
going to happen inevitably, and the uh, more thoughtfully we do so, the better. Um, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? <laughs> <coughs> Well, here, here, here I'll, I'll do something a little bit more packed. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up a subject that might have a little bit more content to it. Um, I'm a big fan of instruments. Um, I love a beautiful instrument. Um, I very much, since working here, consider the venue to be an instrument. I think this, this studio here is, can be best described that way. It's something that you can use to express yourself, right? Not just to do <coughs> a job, not just to do utilitarian tasks, but as a, an expressive thing, as something that can extend from you. And what a network does best is extend a venue, or at least that's very much what we're talking about. That's how I often frame this job. We are extending venues worldwide. Um, a venue can be as simple as a bedroom, or it can be as complicated as, um, as the Met, uh, as an opera house. That's how I frame this. That's how I usually explain this kind of thing to people that don't know what I'm talking about, to my parents. Right or someone that I meet on the street. Uh, I, I'd like to know, how do you guys explain this? How do you guys try to wrap this practice into a nutshell? Uh, if, I, if I have to call someone out, I would uh, start with Ian, uh, because, uh, Ian, I, I haven't, I've spoken to you less, so I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. Uh, you might be muted. Uh, audio. This, this is that okay? There you go. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I was about to throw my two cents worth in anyway, uh, Jesse. So I, I think for me, it's, I think there's one important thing to think about, and, and that's whether it's a one-way or a two-way street. And in your definition of extending, um, for me initially that means, you know, streaming out, like National Theatre in the UK here where they do live performances and send them out to other locations. And, yeah, there's still a lot of work to be done there, but what really excites me is participation, is, is extending, you know, linking theatre spaces, linking performance spaces, and also interacting with the audience. So that's a two-way street, whether it's a, a two-way street between actors and performers, um, you know, in, in two or more locations, or whether it's involving the audience remotely in traditional theatre, so they're not just passive observers, they're actively involved. So that's, you know, and, th and there's a whole lot of metaphors around that, you know, with when you've got more spaces involved, you've got potential for new types of writing, new types of performance, uh, which is using, you know, obviously the power of the internet and overlaid technologies, but it isn't just about technology, it, it involves, you know, writers, theatre directors, actors, performers, um, people in all those areas coming together to explore that, you know, that, new, uh, that new environment, which is more than something surrounded by four walls. Mm -hmm. So taking from Ian, if you don't mind, is, is, I, I completely agree with that, but of course <laughs> I work with Ian a lot. So I guess we agree <laughs> on many things. Um, but uh, for me, actually, the most interesting bit so far has been uh, trying to figure out how can you involve the audience. So how can you make the audience that is remote as part of the play? And, and that's something that, of course, sometimes is forgotten because well, basically you want to reach out to many people. Uh, but that's not enough. You, you want to know how they feel or, or you want to sense the audience somehow. So, for example, we've been doing a lot of research in that. We've been actually running a number of interviews with artists trying to figure out what artists feel from the audience. So we, do, we don't have any data now, right? This is a very complicated question, I think, and we still have to do much more. Um, but that, that's one of the things that we are trying to, so I think if you are looking at the future, I think bringing the audience into the theater play, that's going to be a key issue and of course a very, very important one. Um, I think as well that, that the, all, everything that is enabled is, is splitting the stage. So what we were doing uh, with the Tempest, having having the stage split into two places. So those are very, very nice, uh, uh, I mean, very, very challenging uh, topics to be researching, at least. I know that you guys have been doing that for a long time anyway, but still the challenges are in there. I mean, the network is still, the latency is high. Um, it's very difficult to add other media that actually you want to add in those cases. 
um, it's difficult to somehow visualize how the audience is feeling. So I think all of those, they are very good research questions for me <laughs> for the coming years. And I guess for you guys to make something new to happen. <laughs> and that's really the beauty of that. So. Uh, I agree. It can be a uh, tremendous challenge to actually try to understand your audience or to have any kind of sympathetic moment through these screens. Um, it does happen. Uh, Billy, you have some stories about that. There's a, there's a couple of stories that um, Billy has told where you have been shocked by the amount of emotional content that can come from a projector. Yeah, I think that's a really good that's a really good conversation. Um, I, I always tell the same story, so sorry, Jesse. But <laughs> but uh, but because uh, um, I go back really, really early. I mean, when we were trying to do this, we were u utilizing Skype and we were trying to connect um, La Mama's uh, summer program, uh, La Mama Umbria, uh, to the Soul Institute to the Arts uh, to have an exchange. We had a long time La Mama director, um, uh, Andre Serban was there, um, a Romanian uh, theater director uh, uh, that had directed the trilogy at La Mama back in the 70s. And he um, he was sort of leading uh, as the artist on our side. And then on the on the Korean side, there was we were linked with an auditorium of, a, of several hundred students. And um, they had sh given this amazing display of uh, traditional arts and, and dance and mask and all of this stuff. And we hadn't really prepared anything. And so I think Andre felt a little embarrassed, like we should, <laughs> you know, we should at least uh, share something. So he asked this one Romanian student to stand up and to sing a folk song. And as he did, um, <coughs> this uh, very well-known Pansori singer started accompanying him uh, on percussion. And when that happened, in that moment, when that happened, uh, my wife, uh, Mia, and I, uh, we, we both uh, started to cry. Uh, it was a v very, very moving. And um, I've, I've thought a lot about why that was, uh, trying to sort of dissect it and figure out what was the factor that, that made that so moving to us. And I think it was had to do uh, with the fact that these two communities, uh, this one that was there in Italy and this other one uh, that was in Korea were very, very dear to our heart. And in that moment, there had been this spontaneous ability for those two rooms to be um, connected in a very, very palpable way. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that was what was moving about it. So I think that there, there's this idea that, that this stuff can't uh, exist in a vacuum. It has to um, exist in, 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 a, in a, a building of communities. Uh, so if we, if we don't have a connection with one another, then we're, we're not gonna make compelling artwork together. Um, and that there's a level of education, there's a, uh, a level of um, a practice, uh, group practice, and all of these different layers that have to sort of exist in order for it, for it to be compelling. But I do think that energy, the transference of energy can, can transfer in a way that is uh, impactful and meaningful. Mm. By now, Billy, after um, seeing this, and this is open up to everybody, <coughs> by now after doing this for a while, um, are there some practices that we're beginning to develop? Are there actually some rules that we have, some best practices, some methodologies, or some things that are to avoid when you're trying to actually reach out to an audience through a screen? Well, I'm, I'll just say uh, one really short, specific one, um, not to... Bogart the microphone, but I, but I, but it, the, the other day we were doing a, a really large uh, performance, one of the largest performances we did with the Soul Institute of the Arts. We had we beamed uh, a, a six musicians into um, perform six musicians, uh, eight singers, and two dancers um, in 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 our small studio here that beamed into a production that was happening at the school that involved 200 um, artists at the school. And uh, I was linked through, um, and I'd never actually used it before, it's called Cacao Talk, um, but it's, it's a very commonly uh, chat application and, and call application that's used in Korea and I guess other, also other places for international chatting and calls and stuff. And uh, it, was, it was interesting because in the dress rehearsal, um, I was wearing that as a calm and I, and I was on, on calm with uh, the director of the show, uh, Andrea Pucciotto, who's uh, also from 
uh, from from Italy, from Spoleto, um, but that is uh, teaching at the school currently. <coughs> and he, he was calling the show and telling us, okay, get ready, you know, this is what's going on. And so that night I said, well, it would be amazing if, if actually we were all on comm, you know, like if me and Jesse and, and the main technician there and the director, if we were all on just one group comm. And so, uh, you know, Kakao Talk doesn't do that. So then we tried to move off of that platform and we tried to do Google multi-call. And, um, and then I was finding that it was cutting out and uh, I couldn't hear and it was getting too frustrating. And so we went back to Kakao. So the, the, the thing that, that when, when it comes around to practice was is that, that realization and an advanced realization that we needed to be on comm in order to understand what was happening in the other space, that <laughs> it was a very slow to come to that realization, you know. Um, <laughs> it seems very obvious now uh, that you just are not going to get it through the screens, and no matter what, I mean, you, you have to have a secondary layer of conversation that, that's going. Uh, I think Anna wants to say something. This is uh, Anna Heyman. She's our managing director here at Culture. Hi, I'm Anna Heyman. I'm the managing director here. And every time we do one of these, I come up with some metaphor and then I beat it to death, so I'll try not to do that. But what Billy was just describing reminded me a little bit of the stage manager calling the cues. You know, that, that when you're the technician, you, you know, you really need to make this the performance space. And it has to have the sacredness of the, the stage ha that that has for, for sort of more traditional, quote unquote, analog performance. So what he was talking about was, I think, a, a really good point, which is how do you structure the methodology in a way because the, the performance space is still a technological invention. It's still, a, uh, it's still mediated. So how do you structure this experience so that you have the quote unquote stage manager in the booth, you have the people in the wings who are making the magic happen and maintain the sacredness of the screen space to be a true performance arena? That's my question for anybody who cares <coughs> to answer it. <laughs> Solve it all right now. <laughs> I would like to say something about so. Um, well, um, for first question is, uh, um, I think everybody here is agree uh, about our uh, a great uh, desire for the connection. We are actually addic uh, addict uh, uh, to the feedback and we need uh, uh, this feedback. And for me, uh, because I moved to live in Spain uh, 14 years ago, I felt really alone. I knew nobody. And um, I had uh, a chat to talk with uh, my friend. And I, I start with uh, one question. Is it possible that people that don't know each other, when they connect, can to can to talk with uh, another language that is not uh, words, you know, and uh, we tried the first interaction uh, among uh, Chile, uh, Sweden, and Spain it was the first experiment. After that, uh, well, uh, the result was uh, that uh, in fact uh, the artists connect, and uh, many things happen. And for me, uh, was a uh, so strong because uh, there is something more than technology. There is something that is uh, the emotional connection. After that, we decide to, to build a network to have a more stable contact with other artists. And we, uh, we define uh, four lines uh, to, to advance. And the most important was to, to make workshop to, to train people in this kind of practice. We try trying the people, but in fact, we are learning with them. But uh, we, uh, the most exciting uh, part of my work is uh, that uh, as director of Intact, uh, I try to link situation, link person, link uh, environment, and looking for a global concert. But uh, the last thing, uh, that I would like to say about this is uh, 
all the time it's a human problem. Mm. Even if we have the highest technology, uh, the, the problem mm. is uh, the most of the time is to be in the same page, uh, to have the same uh, desire, the same challenger. And it is why we are proposing since long time ago to have a stable connection, to make it fluid and uh, try to live in the net, to, to learn and never disconnect because you are far, because uh, you are sleeping. No, uh, we propose a continuous flux of data because we need to learn to, to live in the net. And um, it's the only way that new histories, new tales, arise uh, in this new dimension no? where we are here, there, and in several places at the same time. This kind mm -hmm. of uh, interaction can produce uh, uh, things that never happened before because the media is uh, all the time is, uh, is, in, is the condition of the message. Mm -hmm. Something that I love about your work, Sarah, is that you are as much of a performer and a theater practitioner as you are a, a, a media artist, right? And the media artist is not exactly the same thing as a theater person. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that Culture Hub struggles with, just inherently in our practice. Um, and you're, you're kind of getting into that right, right there because when you talk about having the network always on, uh, it, it's, it's kind of exposing the cables. You're exposing the wires. You're becoming very... Um, naked in front of the camera, you know, I mean your life is out there a little bit uh, and, and that's very much the spirit of the media arts where you just kind of let everything out. There's no <coughs> big divide between the stage and the technician booth. It's kind of parts of the same thing a lot of the ways or, or rather they're, they're, they're both a part of the show. Um, I find that can be very true uh, when you're trying to do a network show uh, is that when you stop trying to create the artifice and just sort of let the ch the chatter and the cables and just d don't try d don't worry about the illusion so much. It, it, it's it's kind of a Brecht might be the first you know sort of a, a forerunner of tele of telematic arts because you just kind of have to just be honest about it. There's no there, there's no way of really trying to to, to fake the illusion as much. Th does that, does anybody feel this tension between theater and media arts? This is something that. I feel like we, we, culture has to deal with a lot because we often put those two characters in the room together and they just don't have the same point of view. Uh, can I say something else? Um, I, I think it's, it's interesting um, to think about uh, the media. What, what is the real meaning of telepresence? Uh, we we are uh, normally we are uh, linked telepresence to telecommunications. It is uh, it's because uh, it is why um, maybe the, the great companies like uh, Cisco, this kind of uh, Telefonica, are uh, making an appropriation of the term to say that uh, telepresence is audio and video, and uh, at least uh, telecommunication. But it's not exact. If we analyze uh, the word, it's composed by two components. Tele, that means far, and present, that is here and now. So the, the, the word involves a contradiction. And we are working in this dialectic of uh, you are far, but you are here, OK? But you, you, for example, a voice by telephone is telepresent here, but not necessarily telepresence is telecommunication. It's more the, the utopia of to make present something that is, in, that is distant. This phenomenon can be fire, uh, wind, or any other phenomenon, not really associated to the verbal communication. So if we, if we discuss uh, at the beginning about the basis uh, and the meaning of uh, the vocabulary that we are using, I think we, we're going to avoid a lot of misunderstanding um, about uh, the, the tension 
of media and uh, and um, theater. I would like uh, that somebody else talk about the theater because uh, I am new in this kind of uh, uh, field. Even if uh, intact uh, start uh, from uh, from performance uh, way because we have only audio and video. No, we don't use it. Uh, uh, robotics, for example. So the natural way was uh, was uh, using the body, you know. But uh, I would like give the word to somebody else. Uh, quickly, just to explain to anybody uh, viewing this online, um, if you go, you should probably go check out some of Sarah's art uh, to, to understand some of the, some of her points of view. Uh, she has a lot of things where she's like blowing out a candle in her place and then the, all the candles blow out in a venue hundreds of miles away. Th that's the kind of thing <coughs> that she's talking about here, just to clarify for anybody. Or, or the opposite, yeah, lighting a match and all of a sudden there's, everything's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jason, in, in your experience as a, a, um, a theater technician, right, um, and, and that is someone who's going to be, I mean, you've been working with us on all kinds of different shows. Uh, you, you've seen this practice grow out of Culture Hub. Um, when, when, when you're working at, at Contact, uh, you're not just working with, with theater, you're working with lots of different disciplines. I, is there some group of artists or some, um, s some discipline, some point of view that seems most naturally, th that seem to have the instinct for this kind of work, that seem to already know what to do with the screen and with the microphone and can already overcome distance? I think that kind of splits into a number of different issues, really. One is that um, uh, over here in England, uh, we have a very particular split in terms of the way that live performance happens, which is that... Whoa, that was noisy. There's a bit of performance happening right now. <laughs> Did everyone hear that? It was just me. The noise is in my head. Um, in... in Theatre terms, about eighty percent of the, I would guess, was of uh, performance in the UK is is basically theatre, which would be musical theatre or traditional theatre. The sort of thing we've been talking about, the sort of thing where you have a stage prompt, the sort of thing where you have a number of technicians in the wings and you have actors who will come on and say words and be lit, and you might have background noises, and and it seems to me that a lot of the time uh, that we create um, telematic art, it, it's a very easy framing to just drop into. To become to say, well, right, okay, let's make something that's theatrical. Let's make some theatre that uses the network. So it may have um, performers in different locations. It may have an audiovisual stream. Um, but basically, we're using the same general theatrical techniques, uh, which also has its own problems. For example, the one that we continually hit against. Just going to pick on one example here. Uh, is the fact that the projection screen isn't the camera. Mm -hmm. um, so when performers look at each other, you know, when I'm looking at you now, you know, I'm not looking at you. I'm lucky I've got a, a small screen. If I was using my phone, it'd be an even smaller screen and the camera would be even closer. Uh, but when we see all these things in science fiction movies where someone points at a wall and suddenly it becomes a holodeck. We have nothing like that. We have, the only way we can do that is by putting a camera somewhere close to a screen. Anyway, that's within that, that practice. Um, within the, the notion of performance, people who are, I would say, in, in the UK who work in performance, um, as distinct from theatre, uh, they're very quick to understand and to deal with um, uh, technology in all its myriad forms. Uh, in fact, just before we started here, I was in the middle of um, a pervasive gaming system which involves me sending, receiving texts, hearing voice communications, getting emails, going to websites, and basically burrowing down uh, a kind of Alice rabbit hole Alice. And that's occurring over multiple different formats in, in both real time and in delayed time. Um, so. On the one side, you have the idea of, of, of collapsing new technology telematics into recreating theatre, but with some technology. On the other side, you have performance, which is about, in many cases, I think will be more about saying, what on earth can we do with all this stuff? And of course, we're going to leave the wires open, because of course, we want you to know that that's how we're doing it. 
<laughs> for wanting to know that it's Skype, not for it to be some sort of mysterious thing. Or if it isn't Skype, it's going to be, oh, look, that's an expensive bit of technology over there. But then over here, we're doing exactly the same thing with just a laptop. Um, I do have a couple of other quick questions to go back to some of the points that were raised earlier. Um, one was um, that when we did graphic ships at Fascinate, um, the Skype was our uh, uh, out-of-band communications, and that was absolutely invaluable. Mm -hmm. um, but I did use 12 gigabytes of data, which I was lucky I had unlimited data plan on that day, but that would have cost me quite a lot of money if I hadn't. Um, <laughs> I did want to talk, uh, just to touch on um, what Pablo said before about how you involve the audience. There's an awful, been an awful lot of chat about how you involve the audience. But mainly, I think that's a question that's, you could ask that of any theatre performance. And it, uh, without, you know, do you clap? Do you boo? But to actually, you know, most theatre involves the audience as a, as a single um, homogeneous object. Uh, a lot of performance doesn't. And a lot of performance, and say you say you create a telematic performance that um, is, is streamed to multiple different uh, devices, a phone or a tablet or something, and people can interact there. You know, that's that's a different way of doing things. And you get everybody's an audience member, but how do they feel each other? Um, so I suppose I think that that's whilst it was almost flippant at the beginning, it was actually the most complicated thing because we don't really know how to involve the audience anyway. So doing it through technology is an additional kind of layer of that. Um, I've just got to totally agree with, with Sarah more than anything about the fact that it's all really about a human connection. That's the most boiled down to it. That is the, the, the simplicity of what we're doing is about seeing if that connection is possible using these media. I mean, I, I'm looking at this, I can see you moving slightly, things are jerky, things aren't quite right. And yeah, I still know you're all humans, probably because like Pablo's got his little grin on there. He's like going, oh yeah, that's true, that's true. He is looking down, <laughs> making notes, I think, I don't know. Jesse jerks about a little bit. Like, oh yeah, that's good. But we know that these little tiny pixels on the screen are actually human beings. Yeah, that's what it is. I I, and also just <laughs> stare at the, uh, that the idea of, of the re sort of naming of telepresence and bringing that back to the fore and taking it out of the world of, of Cisco and other companies is such a, a vital and important thing to do. We get defined too easily by basically marketing departments of big corporations, and we should probably avoid doing that. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to respond quickly to that that thought because I'd never really thought about this before but because um, you're always looking for this idea of like what does what does doing this within the context of this medium actually add right so it's taking away all of this data it's creating all of this limitations which I think is one of the things that adds ultimately this idea that I think it's why we are all drawn to it is is that it's so hard in a way um, and that it's so limited and uh, and it's trying to finesse around all of the glitches and, and the troubles but but that idea that you know that that these glitchy pixels on a screen you understand uh, are a person and thus you can you can sort of have a emotional response to that as you would a human being I think is interesting and it made me think of puppetry um, and the idea mm. that how uh, so in some ways, uh, you, you can endow more emotional feeling towards an inanimate object that's being puppeteered uh, than, you, than you can to a live performer. Um, kind of, it's like an animal. There's something, because it is so, uh, it's, it's helpless, it, it, it makes you feel more for it, I think. Um, and so I'm wondering if there's a way that we can u use this medium in that way where we can get more more bang for our buck or more you know more emotion out of uh, the fact that that it is uh, this distance and I, and I mean that completely outside of the idea because 
long since has gone. I mean, Nam Joon Paik was doing this stuff already in the what, like the late '70s, early '80s. So it's not it's not the newness of it that should be. It shouldn't be a gimmick. It should really be what you know. Why why is this important? Um, and uh, what can we get out of it of, of the medium? I, I know my favorite restriction. Can I just oh, quick? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I just had a quick point. In, you know, in terms of where we are with technology, uh, if I was to parallel it with something else in theatre, such as light. So I think if you look at theatre has gone from candles to gas lamps to art lamps to um, you know incandescent lamps to spotlights to very lights to fully computer controlled stage lighting, um, LED lighting. We're kind of at the art lamp phase in where we are with using it technology. You know, we're just kind of saying, oh, look, there's some technology here that can make do a different type of theater and pull audiences in. And so, of course, we're, we're experimenting. So I think there's so much more, you know, other people will develop technology for other purposes and we'll be able to adapt that and use that and get stuff that's off the shelf. And probably not surprising, my background is as a system integrator. So I see this as the technology is a system integration task. You, you, you find new technologies that are stable, that are available cheaply because they've been developed for something else. And then you bolt them together and then you work with all those other people like set de designers and theatrical people. And it's, it's the combination of those that then, you know, creates new mediums and new formats of performance and bringing people together and new opportunities. But, you know, we're at a very early stage. <laughs> Ian, as someone who... Um... I really like the... Um... Sorry. Go ahead, Jason. I was just going to say, I like, I like the, um, the sort of timeline of that, Ian. But uh, at the end of the day, all of those things basically provide light of slightly That's different sorry. types. <laughs> Whereas they're kind of the basic nature of the two-way remote system, uh, do very many different things. I mean, I'm very interested in action at a distance, very much interested in the kind of um, the, the match flame idea that was talked about earlier, those sort of things, which I think this is not so much about, <laughs> this is perhaps we're, the, we're at the candle, perhaps. Maybe we are at the candle. Maybe before this, there was no candle. As someone, as someone that um, uses a lot of candles and burns their fingers a lot, um, what I'd <laughs> like to know, so, something I really want to know, and this is like one of my big questions, uh, that I, and we only have like 10 minutes left, so I really want to ask it. Um, what do we need to get this job done better? Like what's missing? Not just gear, of course, but also methodologies, practices. What's, what's the big missing, like, some of the big missing elements out there and where are we going with this like when we are talking about the the end point or the end game or our, our big goals with this discipline wh what what are you guys daydreaming about so like what do you where do you want to go and how are you getting how do you think we need to get there so from my perspective of course um i do a lot of technology so i think one of the missing things in here is is an actual technology that works uh, I mean, we are using basically something like uh, this system, which basically assumes that I have a camera and I look at the camera and then you see me. And actually, we are using that for doing performing arts, for God's sake. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Right? So, so, so I think that the, a full uh, new technology that actually takes into account the requirements. So, so as, as, as you guys were saying, right, we are just starting. Uh, and we, we need a, a full dialogue with the artists, with the people who is doing this, who is actually making this happen, in order to understand what are the requirements, what are the things that they are needed. I, I was very interested, actually, about everything you guys were saying, uh, about puppeting, about robotics, uh, about how you visualize things or not, about the, the, the problems that you're having in your daily productions. I, I, I really like, for example, when we had the, the Tempest, I, I noticed all that layer of complexity that was added to everything, so in which you really needed mechanisms to, so at, at the performance level, you really needed some people that they were communicating and, and that they had much more uh, than just the, 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 the typical things that you will do in the, in the theater. So I, I love from Jason when he was mentioning 
that how difficult it is for the actor to actually look at the other actor in the other location. Mm -hmm. So, so there, there, there are just so many things that they need to happen in there at the technological level that that's, of course, uh, an essential first step. Um, and then what I will hope is that uh, 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 new productions are coming. So at the moment in which we are creating technology that it actually allows for doing new things, then I'm sure the new productions are coming. I will hope, of course, that the writers as well, they do and develop new ideas. Um, I'm a scientist, right? So for me, the end point is, is writing a paper and get it accepted. That's, <laughs> that's basically my end point. <laughs> but if I can help you guys in actually developing something new that actually connect people, then I will be even happier, right? It's just... <laughs> Okay, maybe, maybe, um, well, uh, I would like to recover uh, some words of, uh, from uh, Gili that uh, previously you said uh, how emotion uh, you can feel when you know that there is another person very far for you in this moment. Uh, and maybe this, this is the so good point now maybe actually because uh, it's uh, more or less new it's difficult so it's unlucky uh, to have these possibilities uh, but in theater uh, i think um, according you you worry is uh, what you were talking before uh, I, I feel that uh, in the people from theater and some directors that that came uh, to us to talk about uh, to make a piece for theater in telepresence they have the same um, the same uh, difficulties it means uh, for example the fact to repeat every night the same piece and make it in real time uh, so if we we have uh, to assume uh, the fact that this uh, is emotion, this emotion is because it's unique, because it's a precise moment and so fragile that it's possible uh, nothing happened one night. And uh, uh, what you can do, you say, okay, you give uh, uh, give back the money to everybody and say, okay, we, <laughs> the, the show cannot, must go on. <laughs> so... <laughs> We, we are using medias that uh, involve uh, the idea of fragility, complexity, mm. and theater mm. is looking for the stability. So mm. this is the, the conflict when we are talking about presence, we are talking about the economy of the presence. And if we experiment and experiment, we are not trying to arrive to the uh, stabilization of the presence. We, we want to move, maybe because we are a, li a little anarchist uh, project, uh, we are not looking for the final stability. We are trying to move the network in a recursive uh, way where you define the another stage depending your movement. I move, so I'm moving you at the same time. So nobody can to be or stay in place. Everybody is moving. So this kind of exercise um, in network can to, it's, it's difficult to, to reproduce every night uh, like the first night. I suppose in theater every time is different, but we are taking very high risk. And uh, we need to assume that it is happening and it's uh, real time, it's fragile. And we are proposing uh, our next uh, piece of work. And I finish with this um, directly to talk about the connection. It means, uh, for example, we made a big ship, uh, 15 meters long in media la prado and something failed okay and when uh, the performance uh, was finished we we thought after why we didn't talk uh, okay uh, and make a performance uh, in a relationship with the media it means for example i am the captain of this ship this boat and say okay montreal what happened with montreal uh, we are missing Montreal. We reconnect everybody in your place and make about the media um, the performance too. Involve the, in the history what is in fact is happening in real life and real time. 
maybe this is the little difference about our um, our challengers or respect to the theater. And but if we can contribute in theater to make it possible and create another fantasies, uh, real fantasies, I'm here too. Mm. Yeah, I'd like to pick up on that. Um, we started with what are your goals? Uh, and I think that what Sarah has enunciated there is the fact that we, we shouldn't be looking at a theatre model of a show that repeats itself every night forever. Um, we already have the mouse trap in the UK it does that. There are probably other shows that go on that as long. Um, what we, what many performance companies in the UK, and I'm sure everywhere else, but as I said before, there's a big dichotomy between theatre and performance in the UK. But performance companies um, and other uh, practitioners of things like clowning and such, they embrace the flop. They embrace failure. They embrace that moment when things fall apart. And what we don't do with this sort of work is exactly that. We don't have enough of it. We don't do enough of it. So we just basically try to plan it before. When we talk about technological fixes for these sort of things, it reminds me of the old joke uh, when someone comes in and says to his team of uh, coding um, people, he says, you lot start coding, I'll go and ask them what they want. <laughs> and that's what we do. We try and figure out a way for the, the to fix problems that we don't really know what they are. Whereas, in fact, what we should be doing is we should be sticking all of us all of our technological brains, all of our artistic brains in a room or in a series of rooms around the world and go, go make stuff and break stuff and get it wrong. And through that process, we'll find out how we can get it right. I, I do. Money. Oh. Yay. Mm. Okay. Just I uh, would like to add, add something to, to Jason is that before you was uh, asking who involved uh, the audience, I think in this uh, kind of practices, it's interesting to involve the people when they have the information enough uh, about what we are doing, where is uh, every part, uh, because what is the difference in some pre-recorded video and real, if you, if you make the experiment to say somebody is real, time or is video, the people say. So involve the people is, uh, for me, is uh, that they enter in, the, in mm. the construction of the piece. And it, mm. it is when they really feel in, in an immersive experiment, um, anthropological experiments, uh, aesthetic, etc. For me, uh, one of the mistake is Present uh, in media, I'm not talking about theater, in media is the people arrive in the installation and not too much. And after they tell, okay, we were in real time and by satellite, it's okay. But maybe it's better uh, the people have the information and give this information because finally it's a cognition, it's a cognition problem too. And uh, if you give a paper, uh, a role to the audience with uh, some device or just for to make uh, they participate in the construction of the history uh, I think it is a is a way was uh, one of our solutions uh, during this year and the people enjoy much mm. more I think it's there's a, a huge it's amount not, of maybe sorry it's not your solution <laughs> but uh, for us has been okay but the <clears throat> theater for me is a, is a big, it's a huge thing. <laughs> I was just thinking there's an awful lot of companies that have made things that uh, involve either people speaking to video or leaving small messages or, you know, basically the, the artwork is participatory and crowdsourced. Um, and usually by, by using some form of technology to leave some trace and then to hear another trace uh, of different participants who have taken that journey, you know, and and making a, a kind of really immersive telematic performance with some kind of legacy or interest or it's, it's, it's about presence, but it's also about agency. 
It's about knowing that you've been there or knowing that that person over there on that screen is there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's also about a, a process too, you know? I mean, I think I think that the fact that things are happening in this process, I mean, when I look back to to Ellen Stewart's work and, and how she brought people of many different disciplines, many different uh, cultural backgrounds, you know, just brought a very diverse mix of people together to make something. And in the process mm. of doing that, right, sure, sometimes you have, you have like a, a, a successful production Right. And 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 then the audience benefits from that as, as you know, something that they can view um, or participate in or uh, but then also it's about that process. Right. And how that's advancing the world and how we're learning about each other. Right. Because we're coming from different perspective, different places. And um, so, I mean, I think I think that's a core of the practice and how you develop an audience. Right. That is a part of that. That that is uh, that has a. Um, you know that they're invested in the in the in the the mm. this whole idea, and uh, you know, so it, it means that the spaces, these these actual real physical spaces, um, need to have uh, the practice needs to be developed right, so that we can work synchronously and asynchronously, so that you can work on the dramaturgy, the writing, and I use that the idea of writing very loosely because it could be completely movement, it could be robotics, whatever, but it still needs a context, a compelling framework uh, by which us to engage, you know, or. The distribution, uh, there's so many things. I, I'm already, we're already over. But so many things, you know, we were worried that we weren't going to fill the 45 yeah, minutes. No. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> but, 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 you know, I feel like we could, we, could, we could have a series of these conversations and go into very, very specific areas. I mean, the new technologies like WebGL, this idea that people at home could, could actually manipulate and uh, use their graphic cards to change or depth sensing yeah. cameras so when I'm watching the performance of Prospero from home, I can actually stand right and look up Prospero's nostrils. You know, I mean, yeah, those types of it's, things. It's very shocking to me that no one tonight has even mentioned the phrase video game. It's just kind of like, a, for me, that's an elephant I said pervasive room. theater. Uh, excuse me? I said pervasive theater. That was close. Close, real close, <laughs> real close. We almost got there. But yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm basically going to say that 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 the, we're at the time um, that we've said that we would we we would stop at. Um, but I I think we should leave the channel open, and and if there's uh, some other uh, conversations some or other group. comments and things that need to be said, then then we should we should allow that to happen. But we'll feel now that we're just uh, in a room together, uh, the formality is gone, and, uh, uh, and we can just chat with one another for a little bit before we say uh, good morning and good night to, to some of you. <laughs> I don't know if everyone pointed out earlier, but... Um, Three of us are at half past midnight. <laughs> totally. You don't look it. So you I don't can look uh, it. Bring, uh, bring a beer now? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so Jesse's okay. gonna Jesse's gonna stop the stop the stream. So we're gonna say goodbye to anyone that's watching out there. <laughs> oh.